Now today's topic is lighting and appliances and you're joining me sitting on the stairs of our home and I'm going to show you the first device that we want to showcase today and this is battery powered LED lighting for the stairs that is wireless. There's three of these in our house in the stairwell. They're detachable, they're not wired and they are movement activated and they only come on at night. If I turn it over, you can see the batteries in the back, like so. So all this is are three AAA batteries. It can also be screw mounted, but ours is just attached with Velcro. And these only come on at night. So when someone walks up and down the stairs, it means you don't have to find a light switch in the middle of the night. Of course, I can't illustrate that during the day, so I filmed this at night. Watch. Okay, that was pretty spooky, but it works really very well. I'm now going to walk you around the rest of the house to look at the rest of the lighting. One thing you will notice about Super Home 59 is that it's 100% LED lit, and I'm going to show you each type of bulb in each room. Follow me. So let's kick off here in the master bedroom, this is over the garage, we have our first array of LED lighting. These are spotlights, we have several of them in the house, and they were inherited when we purchased the house, so they were already here. I'll show you what these bulbs look like. Okay, this is what you have, it's a standard light bulb, it has a standard screw mount, it's a standard shape. It just happens to be LED, it is an 11 watt reflector, so that's a spotlight. And we had purchased these specifically for the light fittings in the house, so we didn't change the light fittings, we just bought LEDs for any light fitting that we already owned. The lights that hang from the ceiling are not the only thing we have in the house that lights it up. We also have a certain amount of task lighting. Reading lamps don't look particularly special at first, but again, they are LED. If I unscrew the lamp, it's a small golf ball type, and it has the mount that we describe as a small Edison screw, an SES. This is a 3.5 watt. Equivalent may be of around 15, 20, 30 watts of an old traditional light bulb. Now the light given out by this little bulb is more than enough to read a book by. That is very bright indeed, as I'll show you. I'm now in the bathroom. We have a very similar array of three light bulbs here in a rack, and I'm going to unscrew one of those and compare it to what I showed you before. <coughs> There's a close-up of the spotlight in the bathroom. It is an LED. It has a 27mm Edison screw, as does this one from the bedroom. But notice they are different sizes. There's nothing special about these other than being LED. They're exactly the same size as the similar units that are tungsten filament or halogen. They just happen to be LED. Now being LED, they use 80% less energy and they last 10 to 15 times longer. They also generate a lot less heat. Now that may be confusing because you have quite a significant heat sink here on the back, but that just increases the life of the LED. It does not mean that they get a lot hotter. I'm now in the second bedroom, my daughter's bedroom. She has a more traditional pendant light. It is also an LED. This, being far more traditional, has a bayonet mount. It is a 10 watt, which is approximately equivalent of an old 60 watt. One thing people ask me about these, do they take time to warm up? No, they don't. That was actually one of the reasons we changed completely to LED lighting at Super Home 59, was because we were very tired of waiting for traditional energy saving light bulbs to warm up and had to endure that sort of brownish glow as they did so. I'll now demonstrate how quickly and instantaneously these light up. Okay, I'm just going to switch it on. Instant, and off, and on, and off, and so on. 
LEDs light up instantly. In fact, they light up more quickly than do original tungsten filament light bulbs. Here in my daughter's bedroom, she also has a task light for reading on the back of the bed. And this is an SES small Edison screw LED light bulb. And that truly is tiny. It's what's described as a pygmy bulb, the type that you can often get for fridges or cookers. This is a 0.8 watt, but believe me, that little E14 lamp lamp is more than enough for any child or adult to read a book by. It's fat, very bright. These are embedded spotlights. They're actually buried in a recess in the ceiling. Let me pull one out for you. You'll recognize this. It's the same R64 spotlight that we use in the bathroom. All of these embedded lights in the upper floor of the house, of course, drill a hole through into the attic above. That is not exactly how we would have liked it, but they were here a moved house. And rather than paying to have all the holes plugged, we simply plugged the space in the attic above it to make it airtight. That means there's actually no airflow past these bulbs, keeping us nice and warm. Here we are in the number three bedroom, which is currently a study and we have another pendant light, similar to the one you saw in my daughter's bedroom, a 10 watt equivalent of 60 watts. And what we have behind me is another work light for her desk, and it's also an LED. This is a, what they call a golf ball sized light. It's on a standard bayonet mount, and this is a 3.5 watt example. Again, more than adequate, bright enough to read by and to work by. Also notice the type of mount that it's in, a traditional library green glass and brass mount. You can more or less use any decorative lighting now you like with LEDs, as long as they have the standard mount. And of course they all do, with the possible exception of some of the halogens, which we'll, which we'll discuss later. Here we are in the lounge, and all of the light fittings here are embedded LEDs. And there's one there, there's one there, and there's one there. There's also a fourth in the hallway behind me, and they are fitting the R64 LED fittings. Behind me is a corner light unit that actually is freestanding on the floor and both the bulbs here used are LEDs. Up there is a small Edison screw with a kind of candle-like fitting. The upper lighter fits a larger E27 Edison screw fitting but apart from that it's a very standard pendant style lighting that happens to be an 8 watt. And more task lighting for reading, this one next to the fireplace, is a standard table lamp, and inside it, a standard bayonet mount for an LED light bulb that is also that sort of candle shape there. It's a 4 watt bulb. This is the dining area, and this is one of only two light fittings in the entire house that was purchased just for this house. They were the only two light fittings we could find in the shop that had this unique layout of six spotlights. Now these are all LED now, but originally they were NG savers. And at the time, we're talking about around 2008, 2009, it was very hard to get NG saving light bulbs in this small compact size that gave enough light. So our solution was to have six of them. Now, those energy saving light bulbs, the old CFLs, compact fluorescents, were not very good. They got a very brown quality of light and they took ages to warm up, nearly a minute in the case of the small ones. They simply were not acceptable. So, a year or two back, we took them out and we bought LEDs to replace them. And to be honest, they've been perfect. Now, these are a GU10 bayonet mount.
very small, just fit nicely in the palm of my hand. These are a 5 watt GU10 spotlight and these deliberately are designed specifically for these type of light fittings but you can buy these in any hardware store. Here in the main body of the kitchen itself we have an exactly identical unit of GU10s, six in a string. These are the only light fittings in LED that have ever failed. We have had two failures in the GU10s in a space of five years, which admittedly actually is pretty good, but not as good as advertised. These are meant to last 15 times longer than normal. So we've had to replace a couple of these. And this is why you can spot a slight oddity. That one is different. I showed you the previous version. The technology is moving so quickly that the bulbs are becoming far more visually attractive. This is a 4.5 watt. This is much, much brighter than the original bulbs used and the originals in the other fitting. Every time we buy a replacement, they get more and more powerful. Groovy. We're still in the kitchen where most of the good lighting technology exists. Again, all LED, but these are under covered lights. Now, when we had the kitchen refitted when we moved in, the original light fittings here looked exactly the same as this, but they had halogen fittings. We couldn't at the time find a good exact fit as an LED replacement. So actually went online and found light fittings that were LED and looked exactly the same and just simply replaced them all. Actually, it wasn't that difficult. These small ones do have to have a separate driver unit and they are plugged in above the cabinets here. And they are not that dissimilar to the ones for the halogens. So they just plugged straight in, no problem at all. Now I've also replaced the original halogen capsules that were in this extractor unit. This was the most challenging piece of retrofit that we've done in the house in terms of the electrics because we couldn't change the entire extractor fan unit. We could only replace those tiny little units in there. Now the halogen capsules will find have two pins. You can buy LED equivalents but they are a different shape. You can go online, in my case, onto eBay, and I did find equivalents and I purchased them and fitted them. One of them actually burnt out um, and the other I had to adjust the size by cutting around the edge of the board to make it fit. So I went back onto eBay and bought a second one that actually was a perfect fit. And there's this one here. I switched them on, you can see they both work extremely well. Now that's me being pedantic, you don't have to do this. Try and specify LEDs when you actually buy the entire unit. That's the best thing to do. So of course you're thinking, yeah, every light bulb is LED, but what about the one in the fridge? Well, I'll show you. And there you go. The smallest LED light bulb in Super Home 59 is indeed the one from the fridge and that is rated at an almighty 0.7 watts, an E14 small Edison screw light bulb, a pygmy. Okay, so maybe we weren't being entirely honest about 100% LED lighting. There was at least one tungsten filament light bulb in the house and it's here in the oven. <laughs> Let's talk about white goods now and in the kitchen here we have an A++ rated energy efficient fridge, a very good one, it's a fridge freezer. There's a sticker on it that proves it, but my wife insisted that I put it somewhere where she couldn't see it all the time, so here it is. Just there. Staying in the kitchen, I'm talking about white goods now. Both our washing machine and our dishwasher here are both A-rated machines. Moving on to the black goods now. This is one of only two replacement TVs we've purchased for this house, and both are LED TVs. They replace old cathode ray tube technology, both of which had actually broken, so we had to replace these anyway. 
Now the LEDs are more efficient and much better than the plasma, but they're not as efficient as the new technologies, the OLED technologies that are coming out in the future. Now the LEDs themselves do nothing more than create the backlight. So the technologies that represent the screen here are similar between LED and plasma, but these actually are more energy efficient, the ones with the word LED written on them. Several years ago, we had this enormous gray CRT screen TV it was around 42 inches and it was too heavy for one person to lift and eventually it went on the blink and the picture went a bit fuzzy and we decided to throw it away and get a new one. So we invested in a flat screen TV which is pretty much all you can buy these days anyway. Now the old TV was not only enormously heavy and used a lot of resources in its manufacture but it was using 200, 300, you know, 500 watts in use. It was incredibly energy inefficient. So when we chose a new TV we did a little bit of research and found out what was the most energy efficient. Well not only are these flat screens obviously using vastly less material resources, this one only uses about 80 watts in use. Another great way of saving energy at home if you like computers is to use a laptop computer not a desktop. We have two laptops like this and they are optimized to save energy in one of batteries therefore they use a lot less power. Likewise with other peripherals such as printers, copiers, fax machines, choose the most energy efficient that are on the market for what you need. Buying energy efficient appliances is not the only way to save energy. Another way is simply to switch them off. If you look down the floor here we have a six gang socket each of which is individually switched and several of those plugs are marked up with the sort of things you want to switch off. So for example that one there is marked up as the amplifier, the TV, the Blu-ray player and the DVD recorder all of which can be switched off. Note that we do not switch off the Sky HD player as that needs to update overnight anyway. It wouldn't do it any good, but those are exceptionally low usage anyway. This has been a Super Home 59 video all about saving energy, specifically through fitting your house with LED light bulbs and energy saving appliances of all kinds. Hopefully you've learned a few things. Firstly, that fitting LEDs is possible in almost all light fittings, particularly if you're very determined. And most of the LED fittings you find in DIY stores are now more than enough to fit any light fitting that you have. You might have a little bit of work with some of the halogens though. Yes, they are a little bit more expensive, but they do last 15 times longer and they do save you 100 or so pounds in their lifetime. So they are definitely beneficial and the prices are coming down all the time. Likewise, with energy saving appliances, there's plenty of choices available. And if you're choosing a large flat screen TV, make sure you choose an LED TV. If you want computing in your life, then use a laptop. Thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for watching. You can come to Super Home 59 and ask questions of us about anything you've seen here today, or even contact us online at www.postcarbonliving.com or at the Super Home website where we have a page. In the meantime, have a great day. I'm Mark Brown. Farewell for now. And remember, you too can conquer your house.